A good book can be transformative. In an age of social media and a growing popularity of book clubs, what we read can also help create communities. Jeffrey Brown explores all this with Glory Edom, who has created a space to celebrate voices that might not otherwise be heard. The Well-Read Black Girl is an online community and mm -hmm. book club that focuses on black women writers. Mm -hmm. We really focus on building and amplifying the voices of black women, mm -hmm. especially debut writers. And so we have a festival, a book club, and an online presence. So mm -hmm. you can participate in various ways. Was it an obvious idea to you? No, it no. was a very unexpected idea. Yeah. It was actually a gift from my partner, Opio. He made me the shirt that said, Well-Read Black Girl. Mm -hmm. And I found myself in conversation with so many different women and it sparked the idea that I should actually start something with this. What does it mean to be a well-read black girl? I mean, conversation, because they were seeing your They were seeing the shirt on the subway, yeah. in the grocery store, yeah. at the gym. Yeah. First, they inquired, where do I get this shirt? Right. Right. <laughs> and cool then, shirt, good shirt. Right. Right, right, and then it was like, so who are your favorite authors and who right. are you reading? Right. Naturally, we went to Toni Morrison, Gloria Naylor, Maya yeah. Angelou. We talked about the literary greats that really uh, influenced the black canon. Yeah. Um, and then it started, so what are you reading now? What are the new writers that are on your bookshelves? And I, it was really a curiosity thing. In the beginning, it was quite selfish. I wanted to make new friends. Yeah. <laughs> and as I did that, it grew, and I built an Instagram, and the, the presence on Instagram grew, yeah. and it yeah. just got larger and larger. But it clearly tapped into some, some oh, completely. need, hunger, what? It was a yearning. A lot of times, black women, we are invisible in spaces. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the publishing industry, there's not always an avenue for women to become writers or to under understand what the dynamics are. Um, and it just became like a cheerleading squad for those who want to do the writing and want them people to buy their books. Mm -hmm. It just happened really seamlessly. So the, the anthology, you asked all these writers that kind of question, yes. sort of, when did you first see yourself in exactly. literature? Exactly, yes. Because that was the, yep. the way into... Well, that was the origin story for me. Yeah. I have always been a person to question and to look for myself in books. My favorite book is Maya Angelou's I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. Yeah. And that was the first time I really saw myself on the pages of a book. Meaning what? Uh, in terms of reflection, understanding the dialogue, having um, someone that felt and looked like me on the page. Uh -huh. I had read a lot of Little Women. I, I saw myself in Joe March. I read Weathering Heights. Yeah. But before that, I don't think I really saw an accurate reflection of a young black girl coming of age um, until I read Maya Angelou and Toni Morrison, The Bluest Eye. Yeah. It's such a, a classic for so many young black women. It was a turning point for me to really understand that the story of black womanhood is one of survival and true and just excellence as well. It's an interesting thing. I and mean, the one thing that books, we often say, those of us who are readers, mm -hmm. is we find ourselves in others, you know? Yes. I mean, we learn about ourselves even if we are not represented in that story. Oh, completely. Just practicing this muscle of seeing yourselves in someone else's story uh -huh. and building a stronger perspective. Yeah. And a lot of these stories, whether it's Jasmine Ward or Jacqueline Woodson or Tiari Jones, they are really looking at their origin stories and what led them to become writers mm -hmm. and what helps them really see their own uh, stories in the books that they read. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important. Like you need that reflection. Um, for anyone. So what uh, surprised you when you started getting their responses? Ah, well, or excited you? Yeah, well, the, I mean, all the tributes to Toni Morrison. Well, yes. They were just so beautiful How and lovingly. How could it not happen, right? Yeah, yeah. it's Toni Morrison. Right, right, right. <laughs> so she, she was really a highlight in the collection. Um, and also, not all the stories were dedicated necessarily to black women. Barbara Smith writes about James Baldwin and how his words really helped her become a writer. Mm -hmm. um, there's one writer, this is Miss Gabby, she writes about Paul Dahl and how reading the memoir Boy was you know, fundamental to her experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily just about seeing an exact reflection, but to make sure that these symbols have meaning and they feel significant. Mm -hmm. And um, you can really just explore. Like reading is, feels to me like an exploratory practice. Yeah. And you should be able to uh, find characters and stories where you can fall into. These are all, of course, writers. These are yes. women who became writers. Yes. 
how much did you see their origin story connecting to the writers that they became? Oh, yeah, completely. I mean, yeah. I think of Jasmine Ward, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of her story, she says she didn't, she read this one book, and it wasn't until she wrote her own that she was able to That's really, right. it was such a profound statement yeah. and a, a yeah. powerful way to end that it compelled her to want to write and tell her own story. And I think that is the takeaway from the anthology that we should be telling our own stories yeah. and we need to be persistent with that and not um, not give up. We've been talking so much about the writers, but yeah. this, as you said, started with readers. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who are the readers? The what are read you? <laughs> yes. There's so many readers. Yeah. Um, the In the anthology, I have list of reading recommendations yeah. and I did that very intentionally because I was thinking about my younger self and the things that I wanted to read I always I didn't always want to read uh, To Kill a Mockingbird right. um, I wanted other alternatives and this book has a list about black feminism black playwrights uh, speculative fiction black coming of age stories poetry mm -hmm. it is a full listing of how to reimagine the literary canon yeah. and there's no excuse to say like i don't know what you know person of color i can introduce to my syllabus or to my high school classroom i think of it as hopefully a great tool for young people and educators you still have an actual book club Yes, I do. Right? Yes. I mean, we, for all the, yeah. <laughs> we do have a book club. <laughs> this old-fashioned book club yes. thing, right? You get together and... It's great. Yeah. You, you know, I think um, for me, having the book club is a great lesson in listening. I really love to listen to everyone tell their own story mm -hmm. and how they relate to the characters. It's still my favorite part. I love doing social media, but being able to sit next to a reader and look them in the eye mm -hmm. and uh, persuade them to maybe like a character a little bit more. Yeah. I love that back and forth. All right, the Well-Read Black Girl Book Club and yes. now the Well-Read Black Girl Anthology. Yes. Gloria Adam, thank you very much. Thank you so much.